fighting against the raging sea, this team of engineers is trying to launch a huge steel buoy, or buoy if you prefer, in the Atlantic Ocean. It's called a power buoy, and instead of directing traffic, it directs waves and turns them into electricity. Today the water is rough and it's making their task almost impossible. We're basically talking about a technology that will be able to harness the enormous amount of mechanical energy in ocean waves and convert that into low-cost, reliable electricity. George Taylor's team thinks there's enough electricity in the ocean to supply power to the world. That's why they're putting wave power stations all across the world. This one is in Hawaii. As the wind blows across the surface of the ocean, the waves accumulate that wind energy. So by the time the waves get to the shore where the wave power station is, uh, you will have acquired a lot of energy in those waves. As soon as they do this, we're, we're good. Fred, Fred's got both anchor lines out. To collect the energy, engineers use a buoy. It's similar to the ones that boats use to help them find their way in the ocean. Only this buoy is massive. It weighs 17 tons, the same as some whales. Well, the perfect waves are the regular waves that continuously come onto the shore. When the waves are too large, uh, storm waves or hurricane waves, then our system automatically closes down uh, because the forces on the system become very large. The power buoy lives in the ocean about three miles offshore. Are you up bottom yet? Uh, I'm up bottom, it's right. powered to the seabed by a heavy chain. That keeps it from drifting, but still allows it to move. The up and down motion of the buoy bobbing on the water creates the electricity. As the wave goes past it, and that energy, that mechanical motion of the buoy, moving up and down on the waves, is then converted into mechanical energy, and then in turn converted into electricity. That all happens inside the buoy. Once the energy is converted, an underwater cable makes it available to consumers. The electrical power that is generated inside uh, this buoy is then taken ashore via a cable. And this would come out of the bottom of the buoy and then would go down to the seabed where it would join on to the underwater cable which would take the power ashore and connect it into the grid. The power buoys exist in groups, creating an offshore power plant that's capable of producing enough electricity to supply a large geographical area. If you look at a, uh, a very uh, large populated area like California with 40 or 50 million people, uh, we are able to show that 100 square miles 10 miles by 10 miles off the uh, coastline of California has enough electricity or enough power in it to produce all of California's electricity. So unlike wind or solar power, which can take up a lot of space, wave power is much more concentrated. It could also prove to be more reliable. You can tell three days in advance what the wave energy is going to be when it reaches the wave power station. The reason you can do that is you can look, look at a satellite photograph and you can see what is uh, a thousand miles out, uh, further out to sea and that of course will be, tell you what you will get later on. Finding an area with good waves is fairly easy and so the buoy is able to produce electricity 90% of the time. That's why right now testing is happening in both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans and very soon both power plants will produce low-cost efficient energy. The uh, cost of the electricity will be the lowest cost of renewable power and we expect within uh, five years from now to be competitive against conventional fossil fuel power and below that of wind or solar. George Taylor expects that in the next decade consumers could say goodbye to high energy bills as ocean power becomes the wave of the future.